Hello everybody, welcome back to X-Plane 11. My name is Micah and today we're going to be covering the 767-300ER by VMAX and Flight Factor. We are going to be doing the cold and dark startup. This tutorial will not cover the FMS. Uh, so if you're looking for that, I'll be creating a video on that shortly uh, and a separate video to show you how to use the FMS and autopilot. Today's video is purely on how to start up the 767 using the built-in checklist in the tablet provided. So let's go ahead and get started today. I'm going to pull the tablet up and we're going to go to the in-flight and checklist and then we're going to change from normal to amplify. This gives you the full checklist with kind of some uh, instructions as well. So it's going to assist you as you continue to learn this aircraft. So to start off, we're going to turn on the batteries. The battery switch is going to be turned on. So if we go into overhead panel, we're going to look at a couple of things. So your basically all of your electrical power is going to be right here in this center this entire panel right here, this is your electrical power. This is your hydraulics, this is your IRS, and then you have your fuel and engine starts, and then your anti-ice lights down here, it's the passenger signs and uh, passenger pressurization, all that kind of stuff here, and then your packs are over here. So we're gonna start right here with the battery and standby power. So we're gonna open up the battery and then press on. And you'll notice that it highlights green on this checklist, which is nice to have here on the EFB. Then we're going to change the standby power from off to auto. To do that, you can either uh, click and drag, you can't click and drag, I'm sorry, uh, roll with your center mouse uh, wheel here uh, from off. We'll switch to auto. You'll notice a lot of other things already automatically went green. Uh, it's just looking for a state of that particular switch. Uh, but if you want to continue through the checklist as is, you can do that, or you can skip from what's you know, already been selected as green and continue on. But you can check over here, like hydraulics, C, center, they're off, left and right's off as well. Landing gear, if we go down, we can see it's in the down position. Uh, and alternate flaps are guarded and off, as you see here. Electrical power uh, established. Uh, we are pulling electrical power right now. Um, so we are have established electrical power. N normally, this would be where you either A, you turn on your GPU, or you start powering up your APU, which you see here in a second. Uh, we're not going to use a GPU today just to show you that you can function without a GPU. If you did want to turn on the GPU to do that, you go to Operations, Ground, and then you just pull a GPU unit to your aircraft. And normally, you're going to want to have uh, pretty much all of this... Um, these items here on the um, the ground operations uh, here ready to roll uh, and mainly that's because you're gonna have to load the aircraft we'll get into that in a second though uh, again we're gonna do the checklist first and then we'll get into some other stuff as we go along so electrical power is established bus tie switches go to auto right now they're on ISLN which is isolation so you switch to auto on the left and the right APU gener generator, so again, skip if the external power is available. For example, we could use external power today, uh, but I'm not going to to show you how you would do it as if you didn't have external power. Uh, in most cases, you will have external power, in which case you would hit the external power button. It says available right here. It would switch to on. But again, we're going to do an APU start. That way you can see how this would function with uh, kind of a modified... Uh, modified startup procedure that way if you don't have external power you can still power this aircraft up but again if you have external power it is very much uh, recommended to use that and you just hit the external power here skip the APU power sequence at this point and you start it up later but we're gonna start at the APU today uh, to show you how to do that we're gonna go down to the uh, center console here and we're looking for the fire overheat test engine APU and cargo All we're gonna do is hit this button here And we see that we're getting left and right engine overheat, forward and aft fire uh, notifications here on these lights. And that's what we're looking for. We want to make sure that the fire test is functioning and that in case of an actual fire, uh, it will notify us that there's a fire in the system. 
Now, if we go to the APU here, uh, which is down here, uh, what you do is you change your APU from off. We switch to on, it's gonna show you a fault and then it's gonna go away. And then you're gonna switch to start. You'll notice the back, the left forward pumps automatically turn on to pull fuel to start up the APU. It's gonna go run and they'll switch back to on. And we'll wait for the APU to finish powering up here. You'll notice it says off right now. Uh, once it's done kind of spooling up here, we'll switch to on. All righty. APU is now on, so we're receiving power from the APU instead of the battery itself. Um, we can guard the battery, actually. We can close that, no problem there. So now we'd start up the IRS. So we turn this to nav, nav, and nav. And we switch the heading here, and you'll, uh, that's just to give you the, basically, information here. No big deal. It's just, on all Boeing aircraft, always switch the heading. Status display, all we're looking for right now is verifying that we're receiving the expected messages, and we are. Uh, you're going to get a lot of error messages here in the system, because a lot of your systems aren't functioning at this point. Uh, and that's no problem at all. Uh, if we go down here, hit the status button, uh, let's see a better view here. You're gonna see uh, different information here, your hydro hydraulic uh, quantity, so this is hydraulic fluid quantity. 0.88 is fine. As long as you're over 0 0.80 in your left center and right, you'll have no problems with your hydraulics. Uh, your EGT, so this is your APU, so this is uh, what we were looking at earlier. You can see that we're EGT is 640, RPM is 100, and you'll get oil quality. We are running fine on our APU. Zero on the fuel flow, and oxygen pressurization is 1735. As long as it's over 1500, you're good there as well. So we can see the status display, verify that only expected messages are shown. We're good on that, check that, and we've checked our verifier quantities. Next, this is our CDU pre-flight. So this is the FMS, the FMC. Uh, we're not gonna work on that today, so we're actually going to skip that and continue on our startup here. On our pre-flight controlling, we're gonna do yaw dampener. So this is left and right yaw dampener right here. They're gonna to go to the on position. Next, we're going to go to the electrical engine uh, controller, uh, switches, unguard them, turn them to on, and reguard them. Didn't mean to, didn't mean to hit that uh, <laughs> off again. All right. Next, we're gonna to go to their, uh, again, Go down to our bottom page here. You want to verify that your system pressure lights, uh, I'm sorry, nope, wrong one, up here. System pressure lights are uh, illuminated. The are illuminated, so we're good there. Left and right engine pump switches. These are right here. Left engine, right engine pump switches are into the on position. And then it skips down, which again, like I said, it's gonna automatically go through and cycle through to make sure everything else is correct. Like left and right electrical pumps are off. C1 and C2 electrical pumps are off, uh, which they are right here. You can see they're off. Battery switch is on. Standby potter is an auto. GPU generator switch is on. Bus tie switches are on. Now utility bus switches. These are left and right right here. They need to be turned on. Generator control switches need to be turned on. Right now, left and right are off, so we turn those on. Again, it's gonna keep cycling down, uh, depending on what's already started or not. If you hadn't started the APU, if you had done an AGPU start, this is when you would actually start the APU at this point. Again, make sure you run a fire test before you start the APU, uh, just to make sure everything's working fine, and that in case there's a bad start and there's a fire, it's gonna let you know about that. So again, the reason why I switched to the heading here, you see the five here, it's counting down from seven minutes to a line time. So that's why I always switch it to heading so I can see that there. Anyway, so taxi light switches are off. Runway light switches are off, and these are right here. This is your taxi, this is your left and right runway switches. Those are off. Emergency light switches go to arm. So we switch this to arm and guard. Passenger oxygen light check. Uh, so this is your passenger oxygen light. It should be extinguished right now. We're not putting any type of oxygen into the passenger compartment. 
So that is checked and off. Uh, this is just a warning. Do not push the RAN air turbine switch. Uh, this is right here. Don't don't hit that. Uh, it, it can cause problems. We want to make sure it is um, unlocked and that there's no, uh, it's not illuminated. All right, so that's verified. As engine starts, selectors need to be switched to auto at this point. So we'll switch them to auto. Again, it's going to jump down here. But again, you want to make sure everything is set properly. Fuel jet panel, jet nozzle selectors are off. Uh, jet selectors off. And crossfeed switches uh, should be off. Left, right, and center pumps all right here again are off position. Except for the APU. If the APU is on, you're going to see one of them is going to be uh, not uh, off. The pressurization switch will be off on that. Wing anti-ice switches off. Engine anti-ice and wiper selectors are all off right here. All of these are off. Position light switches comes on. So position lights right here on the left, that can turn to the on position. Anti-collision lights should be off wing as needed. If it's dark, so if it's uh, past sunset, you would turn on the, wings, uh, the wing lights. But since it is not past sunset here, we don't need the wing lights on. Left and right and uh, center uh, nose gear or landing lights should be off. They're all in the off position as of now. Left and right window, switches, uh, window heat switches go on so window heat uh, which is up here left right all on this is the passenger signs they need to both go auto uh, the auto rate so what you're looking for here on the pressurization oops, let me get that out of the way is this is the auto rate in general you're going to keep it right here at this little uh, looks like a little almost like a little pyramid looking thing uh, squarish I don't even know what kind of shape specifically that is but uh, you want the line to be pretty much where it is next you'd set, let the landing uh, auto rate selected landing alt altitude uh, depending on what airport you're going to you pull up the chart and see what the airport elevation is i'm just going to put 240 at just a random number we're not actually flying today so uh, it doesn't matter but uh, you would put the actual airport elevation you'd be landing at uh, right there and that's set then you're going to change the mode selector which is right here you're going to switch it to auto there's auto one and auto two you're going to keep on auto two alternative equipment cooling switch uh, which is down here it's going to stay in the auto position now we're going to turn the temperature controls which are up here on the forward mid and aft cabins we're going to switch them to auto across the board our flight deck cabin temperature controls, which is right here in the center, is also going to go to auto. Our trim air switch will go on. Our left and right recirculation fans will go on. And then our pack controls will go to auto. Next, we're going to turn on isolation valves. Left isolation, right isolation, and center isolation. Then we turn on our injured bleeds and our APU bleed. Now notice that we just got pressurization in the ducts, and you can hear that air uh, be heating up here, cooling down actually probably uh, here in the cabin. Uh, and that is good. That's what you want to hear once you've turned all of those on. And turn that volume down just a little bit so you can hear me continue to talk here. Next, you would go down to your flight directors, which is right down here at your MCP flight director on, and you're going to turn both of them on, even though. And when you select one of them on, it does both. It like says it's okay, but makes you turn both of them on. Same for the VOR and DME switch. These need to go both into auto mode. Next, you would check your oxygen to test your oxygen, uh, which you're going to basically do. Go to your status page, which we are already here. And you're going to test your oxygen mass. Now, for over here on the captain's side, there's a little button here. And you'll look for that little uh, symbol. It looks like a hand that's pointing its uh, indicator finger up. You press the test button, and it'll test the oxygen for you. And you go over here and make sure the pressurization on the oxygen pressure, again, is over 1,500 PSI, and it is, so we're good on that. So next you, uh, again, this is just going through. Sometimes the things seem a little redundant. Um, but uh, you need to make sure you're following the, the things to make sure you don't miss anything. What we're looking for here is the flight director source selector, uh, which if I remember correctly is going to be over here. Yep. Uh, you're going to make sure it's in the left 
Left means that it's going to be pulling its instrument stuff, all that kind of things. It's going to be pulling from the left. Uh, there's left, right, and center. Uh, we're pulling from the left. Navigation instrument source selector should be on the FMC. Now, I do want to point this out. There's a left and a right. We want to keep it on the left. If we had it on the right, it would pull from the right FMC. We are a pilot. We're going to be flying. It's going to be the left FMC. FMC, you're going to program everything in. But let's say your left FMC broke mid-flight. You could switch it to the right FMC and function off the right FMC. But we're going to be using the left FMC, so we'll remain on the left. Your inertial reference, uh, this right here, the IRS and EFI, those should be off. You shouldn't see anything on those. And the air data will stay in the left selector. All right. IRS 1, 2, and 3 aligned. We want to make sure those are aligned. I think we are close to being aligned. Yeah, we're one minute away from being aligned. Once they are aligned, these lights right here will actually begin blinking. Uh, the line button will begin blinking. So we'll let that uh, happen here, and uh, we'll then I'll show you how to align the IRS, which actually requires some FMC uh, controls here, but. Uh, We'll wait and uh, show you that once it's ready to go. Again, not going to function, not going to show you all the function of the FMC, get into the programming of the flight, you know, to, from, all that kind of stuff, departures. All that's going to be left to a different uh, video. Now you see that they're all starting to bleak align. That's what you want to see. And go down here. We'll go into the FMC, the pause init page, pull the GPS position, and put it into IRS position. And that's just to help us. Uh, with our instruments as well. You'll notice that IRS aligned have all going to ensure. Next, we're going to set our altimeter. Uh, to set your altimeter, we're going to pull up. Uh, we'll use the default here in the map. We'll pull up KPDX, which is where we are, and the altimeter 3015. So we'll close that out. Now, to set the altimeter here, uh, there's a couple places you're going to want to do that. On the left side, on this altimeter right here on the right side, this little uh, button here using your scroll, I'm sorry, left side, I, like I was saying, scroll wheel 3015 uh, on the altimeter. And then you're going to do that at on this lower one as well, 3015. And then you're also going to do it over here on the right side. If you don't do that, then you'll actually get a warning inside the ECAS message system here saying that it, the have a um, altitude uh, error or offset or something like that or not aligned uh, in that kind of format. All right. So uh, now we've set that. Now we're going to verify our instrument indicators are correct to make sure nothing's like showing, you know, we're going 300 knots or anything like that, um, that these all should say TO, TO, and then FD, uh, that all these look like they're functioning and not broken. Uh, we'll say we're good to go. All righty. Next, we're going to verify that uh, only these certain flags are shown, TCAS suspected RDMI flags. Again, we're going to make sure that it's saying TO, which is your auto, uh, your roll mode is on TO, pitch mode is on TO, and AFDS status, which is your, uh, basically your, what is your, what is the aircraft pulling from? Uh, is it going to be, you know, following the flight director, et cetera, and it's on flight director, and those are checked. So we're good on all those. Again, it's going to skip everything uh, as long as everything's good to go. Uh, auto land status annunciator. Check. We want to make sure it says no auto land and the top one is blank. Uh, we are good there. Landing gear is down. Alternate gear is guarded. So if we go over here to um, this part of the aircraft here, we'll see the alternate extended gear is guarded. The G. PWS flap override, gear override, and terrain override switches are all off and guarded. Heading reference is on normal. Um, that's not heading reference. That's the alternate flap says on normal. Uh, the heading reference, if I remember correctly, uh, it is around here somewhere. Where did it go? Up oh, here it is. Heading reference is on normal. Alternate flap selectors on normal. Alternate flaps are uh, off, which they are. Uh, they're not down or anything like that. Left and right, you see these right here, they're off. So upper ECAS message check. Again, you're going to see a bunch of errors here, and that's because the primary engines aren't on or anything like that. Uh, so don't expect uh, it to show 
nothing there is going to have a bunch of stuff uh, but we're good there uh, we can go ahead and do that secondary engine indicators if we zoom in here I want the engine display and we're just going to check and make sure everything looks fine here You're not going to see really anything uh, which is fine that's what you want to see you don't see any type of you know boot up or any type of engine running that could cause problems so we're good there no exceedance shown stat display we'll select that computer selector auto so if we zoom in here uh, you'll see the computer says left auto and right we want it on auto we'll leave it on auto uh, status selector yes thrust reference selector uh, see this is the reference selector you have left and right in both it's currently on both but there's left there's right but we want to keep it on both decision uh, height selector check uh, so this is your EFIS panel here so this is your decision height selector uh, we want to make sure it is I think that's right uh, checked yes it's currently it looks like it's blank but I can't see it that's interesting normally that's illuminated and you can see what it's saying but I can't see it hmm interesting all right well just go ahead and say okay uh, train switches uh, this would be off and HSI range check uh, so this is your HSI range uh, 20 let's say that's what we wanted on um, maybe that's no that's not working out that's fine traffic switch make sure that's on if you look it says TCAS off we want it uh, TCAS on now we're moving down here make sure our VHF panels are checked however you know you want to make sure whatever programs you want to go ahead and program your uh, your frequencies you're going to use in there ADA panel same thing you check it your engine fire panel uh, which we went down here this is it right here you know checking that making sure everything's functioning properly fire switches are in make sure those are in we don't want them to the left or right that means they're popped out that's a problem means the extinguishers are on we want to keep those selected down and in transponder you want to you know whatever ATC gives you for your transponder you know you would go ahead and put that in here and keep it in the standby position or the alt off position depending on uh, what they want and if you're taxing or not your ILS position ILS panel here uh, you would put in your ILS frequencies um, as you would uh, expect alrighty cargo firearm switches are off so again that we're just making sure that the um, cargo fire switches which are right here that they're off not, they're not firing or anything like that that would be a problem and APU fire switch again we want to make sure that's done down and nothing's illuminated so we're checked there and right VHF communication panel again programming whatever you need into that so we'll go to the pre-flight not controlling uh, so this is the uh, first officer side again you're going to do the same thing uh, basically on the left on the right and then you're also going to do some other stuff on the MCP uh, the auto throttle will go to the arm position banks should be in the auto the uh, autopilot disengage bar should be up oxygen should be verified so you'd verify again the pressurization and you do a test on his side we'll just go ahead and say we did that flight director source uh, same thing that like you did on the left side you'll do it on the right side put it in the right position because remember we're on the right side not the left side left on this right on this and the FMC should be on the right side which it is these should be in the off and air data should be right our land status again should be no auto land that should be blank reserve brakes uh, those should be off and uh, I'm trying to remember exactly where those are located uh, I thought they were over here somewhere uh, don't exactly remember where those are uh, but uh, that's all right uh, this may, uh, may I don't think it's talking about auto brakes here but these are in the opposition so we'll say that's what it is altitude indicator caging um, that is uh, I saw that earlier too and now I can't remember where that was either um, but uh, standby instruments altitude indicator caging where is that I saw that earlier uh, wasn't over here was it there it is there it is attitude indicator caging it's that little button right there I knew it's one of those little buttons and you just pull it uh, ILS selector is off stable engine selector is auto auto brake RTO so I'll switch that to RTO alternator stabilizer switches check those those are going to be I believe up here uh, if I'm mistaken 
could be. Oh, you know what? I am mistaken. It's down here by the throttle. Um, these should be uh, closed and guarded, which they are. Let's see if I can make that bigger again. It went small. How did I make it? I don't know how I made it go small like that. I'm trying to come on now. Oh, nope, that's not it. Come on. It's weird and funky, this EFB. Oh well, come on. There we go. That's interesting. Okay, back. There we go. That's set. Speed brake lever is down. Thrust. Is it down? Is it not down? It is down. It's saying it's not, but it is. Uh, reverse thrusters are flat. Flap levers are zero. Make sure those agree with the uh, actual flap indicators here, which is at zero. So it does agree. Parking brake is set. It is set. Stave trim cutout switches, which are, let's see, stave trim alternates. Uh, these are cutout switches. This is the ones that we're looking at earlier. Those are cut off, guarded. Uh, fuel control switch, fire warnings check. Uh, again, we already um, did all the fire warning checks. So we're good there. Terrain. And it just, again, it seems like you're repetitive because you kind of are. This is the first o first officer's checklist is what we're going through now. We've already gone through the uh, the uh, the, co the pilot, the captain's uh, checklist. So a lot of these are repetitive. So go ahead and go ahead and continue on here. So before start procedure, uh, so this is going to cover a lot of uh, things that are related to the computer itself. We're not going to cover those. You do want to make sure your front and exterior back doors are closed. So with the aircraft, you want to make sure, um, which I'll cover in the FMC, to use the load and unload feature and make sure you've loaded your aircraft properly. Uh, but this is talking about your doors. You want to make sure those are closed. All of that I'm going to cover in the other video uh, because it has a lot more to, pertaining to the FMC than it does anything else. We'll go to the overhead panel here to the hydraulics, which is on the left side. And we'll go ahead and say we've done all that. And yes, 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 yes. All right, right electric pump. So this is your right. We want this uh, pump to come on to auto. Center one and two electric pump switches on. Left electric pump to auto. Central air pump to auto. Left fuel pump switches on, right fuel pump switches on, a red anti-collision switch goes on. Then we'll do a recall, which is down here, the recall, and you'll see these warnings, no big deal. We'll check our trim, make sure that it's uh, in the proper position, and we're good there. We'll go to our engine start here. Normally you would do a pushback while you're starting. Uh, we're not going to worry about the pushback for time's sake, uh, but you normally do a pushback and start. And as you're pushing back, you would actually start the aircraft. But we'll just go ahead and start it right here at the gate. You wouldn't actually do this, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do it just for time's sake. So we want to go ahead and go down here, select the engine. We'll go up here and we'll turn off the packs. So pack one and two come off left engine start selector so this is the left one goes to ground and what we're going to do we're going to wait for n2 to hit 15 percent then we're going to turn this fuel control switch to run we're at 15 turn it to run you'll notice the gate is actually starting to push back from us now i have auto gate installed and we're waiting for this to uh, run up and be uh, stabilized we're waiting for that idle so we're just waiting and waiting continuing to wait uh, we just noticed that the aircraft automatically changed over from APU power to generator power off the engine that is normal Just waiting for idle here, waiting for everything to stabilize. Just takes a bit of time for it to get there.
All right, it's at idle. What you're doing is waiting for about 21 uh, on your uh, N1, and it's raised over 21. Now it's at 23, and it looks like it's stabilized now, so verify idle. Then we'll go to the right engine and do the same process. Go to ground. Watch as N2 rises. Wait for 15. Hit run. And we'll wait for idle on this one as well. And we'll continue to wait until idle is ready. Notice the other half switched over from battery to our AP power to the engine power. Waiting for that idle. I'm going to clear this message there. All right, we've got idle on the engine number one. So then you would go to your before taxi. So basically everything started up. The only things that you would need to make sure you follow is the rest of the checklist here. But specifically, what you'll want to do here, change, turn off your APU power, switch that to off. Engine into ice if you need it, turn it on. Uh, we don't need it right now. Pack control, you want to turn your packs back on. Don't forget to turn your packs back on. Uh, turn off your isolations and turn off your APU uh, bleed. It's essentially you do that because if you don't, your pressurization system won't work properly and you'll all go into hypoxia as you climb, uh, which can obviously cause problems uh, <laughs> when you're uh, climbing out of the uh, lower atmosphere into the upper atmosphere. All right, status display select, uh, which is right here. Flaps, you check, you do all this information Logo lights come on if it's at night. You keep them off if it's not. Uh, Anti-collision lights are good. Flap lever you set. Transponder taxi light switch, which is this one right here, would come on, and you would taxi, and then you'd go to before taxi, which we're not going to cover today. But uh, so at this point, your aircraft is fully turned on. It's not fully configured because we have not covered the FMC. That's going to be a separate video. But hopefully, this has uh, helped you guys in learning how to start up the. 767 300 flight factor uh, VMAX aircraft 300 ER I should say uh, and uh, obviously before you taxi you can make sure all of your ground equipment gets removed and everything like that all of that will cover in the FMC video uh, that'll be a little bit more in depth for actually how to handle this aircraft itself and how to fly it and do the autopilot and everything like that but uh, I had to request that we just cover the cold and dark, so here it is. Hope this has helped. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the like button, and uh, that'll do it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time up in the sky.